moving on to the uh, main cab here. Uh, as you can see, connected floor in the back, bulkhead, and then we can attach all the various bits and pieces and then finish off with the front firewall. I've already cut out the three main parts. Uh, the front firewall and the rear bulkhead. They're nice and flat and I've cleaned them all up. I have a problem with the floor though. I'm not sure if you can see there's a fair bit of distortion. Uh, now at the back it's thin enough where I can actually get it to look it okay. But at the front, I'm not sure if you're picking this up, but there's a, this bit or this side is kicked up. It needs to come down. So what that means is if I put the worst side on to its proper position, uh, you can see just how far out it is at the, the back. So it should be almost flush or parallel with the bottom here. But as you can see, it's got a fair bit off. Similarly, if I put the front other side in its correct location, uh, two six, you can see just how much it needs to come up. So that kind of messes me up a bit because the plan was, as per the instructions, to glue the bulkhead and the floor together, and that will allow me to, to try some weathering and wood effects on the base here. So, but if I do that, I'm going to get into a bit of a trouble trying to manipulate this. Also, if I glue both of them together, then I'm going to restrict my space in here for fitting all the seats and the levers and whatnot. So what I think I'll do is I'll glue this first side by itself initially. I'll, I'll leave that to go off. Then I'll come back, do the other side. And then once that's finalized, I'll uh, glue the firewall to the, to the transmission hump here. So it'll probably take a bit of time because I really want this section here to be fully set up so I can force this bit into position here. So I'll do that. I'll put on a fair bit of glue here. I really want to have a good bond because it's going to take a bit of forcing I think. So I'm not sure if you can see the rear of the floor is slightly lower than the, the front uh, firewall, but the line here is parallel and that's what I want. So, and that's kind of taken up pretty well. And then rather than following the instructions of uh, having the back and floor and working on it, I'll have the front and the floor and I'll work on it. Okay. Okay, so I've had this clamped for about half a day now. So that should be uh, secure enough now. So to do the other side, as you can see, there's a fair bit of movement I can put it down and it kind of sits in its proper place, but it's still a bit, uh, still needs to go up. hard against in this outside edge. So what I've done to hold to hold the flange against the front, we just sanded a close peg here so it's flat at the front and that allows it to, to grip. And I can actually push it up so it's hard against the edge there. So I'll get some glue into this and then we'll 
will clamp it up down to sleeves the circumference of the transmission hump and then that's easy enough to press against. There's also a couple of flanges here and that grooves so that will help uh, grip it all. So as you can see there's a fair bit of movement there but let's get this uh, side glued up. And again I'll use a fair bit because I want it to be pretty secure. Press it hard to get started, and then I can get this clamp onto it, and then push up against that edge there. So that's it. So again, I'll just leave it for a fair bit. Okay, so the other side is the time to set up. So now uh, it just remains to, to glue the transmission tunnel or hump onto the firewall. So I'll do that now. So I'm not sure if you can see from above, but the amount of space now or twist is reduced considerably. So hopefully once I get the bottom braces under which attach to the chassis and the rear firewall on, hopefully that takes the last of the twist out of the park. So while I've got this here, what I'll do is I'll, I'll glue in the, the other components onto the firewall. And then the uh, console for the instrument or the instrument panel. Got these braces to put on, and then that should be it. So this is as much as I'm going to do now to, to the carb. Uh, next up will be prime. Uh, then I'll do the floorboard effect, or wood effect. And then I'll uh, do the base color all over. Okay. So that's the main carb. Uh, ready for priming. As you can see, I've, I've put in the, the pedals for the throttle brake and clutch. Uh, interestingly, where the clutch pedal sits, there's a good opportunity for wearing the paint here with the driver's foot. OK, 
Okay, so that's that. Also, some of the interior parts, so here's all the levers. And also, the seat backs and pads. And that just leaves the seat frames to clean up. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get them all into the primer next. So all the car parts have now been sprayed in uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500 for primer. So what I want to do now is concentrate on the interior of the cab. So the interior has a wooden floor, but the whole cab is painted green. So the, the plan would be, I'll try and replicate the wood here, apply chipping fluid, paint it green, and then concentrate on where the main wear areas would be. So just thinking about it, this area here where you come in through the front uh, door through here because that steps into the rear cab as well underneath the seats would probably remain pretty much a green colour coat and then this area here which would be the entry for the passengers so we'll try and get some wood effects going in preparation for that what I've also done is having a look at the metal work here uh, Again, this will all be a green top coat, but what I've done is I've put in make uh, old rust here. The thought process being the driver's clutch pedal here is right next to this bit here, so his feet's always going to be rubbing or resting on there. There's a double passenger seat, so their feet's going to be rubbing against here as well. So what I've done is, again, put in some old rust or we'll apply the chipping and then remove this high areas where people's feet is going to wear out. So for the for the wood floor I thought I would try some oil paints. So these are cheap uh, tube oils from just the local office supply store and what I've done is I've just put some onto thick card which will soak up the, which I believe is linseed oil within the paint. Because if you don't do that, the linseed oil will take, or make the paints take forever to dry. So with most of it soaked into the card, we're left with just the, the pigments. For the thinners for that, I've got Mix Enamel Odorless Thinner, which works for oil paints. But when I got the paint, I also got uh, just a jar of artist oils with other solvents. I believe it should be very similar to this. It's for oil paint anyway, so we'll give it a go. Difference being, you get a lot more for a lot less cost than the ammo stuff. So we'll see how it goes, and if it works out, then it'll be a good replacement for that. So with that said, We'll just uh, we'll give it a bash, I guess. See how we get on. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just dispense some of this uh, thinners into these little cups. You see, it's a bit off color because when I've been messing about with it before, I was just dipping the brush straight in, but. I've kind of contaminated a bit with uh, something on the show. Well. See, that's a lot clearer. So, so move it aside. To be honest, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here, but we'll give it a go. I've got some cheap brushes here as well, just for just for uh, spreading it out and working it in. So what I might do is kind of try and get a bit of variation within the boards, because each board is continuous, so I'll make, oh, I don't know, see if we can make one a bit darker and one a bit lighter. So I might just 
dive in some. Like I say, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here, so, but I don't want to overdo it in the first attempt. So we'll make up one more, this light brown. Maybe make this one a bit darker. We see a little bit more. I put black because I'll do a pen wash in between the boards, but that might be too dark. So if that's the case, we'll use some of this. Uh, I think it's burnt sienna and burnt umber, or vice versa, I forget. And I put a bit of yellow ochre just to see how I, you know, I might give it a try once I've got the basics done. We'll see how we go. So, I'm now guessing, using this, and as we just, uh, Started anyway, and we'll see how see what pans out. Let's go a bit more. Good thing with this is, with it being oils, uh, and even with the majority of the linseed taken away, it will still take a fair bit of time to dry. And you can come in if you're not happy in uh, using using the thinners. You can virtually remove it all, start again. So the wood base coat color I used was uh, Tamiya's deck tan. I probably wanted something a bit lighter, uh, like a buff, but I didn't have that at hand, so. I'm slowly building up, I'm, I guess at some stage I'll have to determine that I've got the effect I'm looking for, but I really don't, I really don't know what effect I'm looking for yet, so. We'll see how it uh, see how it develops up. By the looks of it, it looks like I can apply considerably more than I started off with. So. What I might do as well is concentrate more in the wear areas because potentially that's going to be. Uh, darker just because of the, the foot traffic on it so but again I'm, I'm kind of making this up as I go along so I've <clears throat> if it doesn't work out it's not too big a deal Kind of trying to go with the grain as well. I also on the rear wall which fits here and again you can step up into the cab and through into reverse i've 
put in some of the old rust here as well because this will all be green and then I can chip around about here because people's feet catching and banging against this panel so that's kind of the theory anyway What I will do so is <clears throat> I will spray the floor when it's finished with a light coat of clear yellow, Tamiya's clear yellow. I've seen this on uh, like World War One aircraft where people replicated the, the wooden cockpits and whatnot, and it does give a, a, a bit of pop to the, to the wood, so I'll do that. But the yellow oil paints itself, so yeah. I'm not too happy with. I kind of, it looks like it's kind of building up okay in this area here. I'll need to get in and do some more under the pedals and I'll redo some of this back step. I'm kind of just making this up as I go along, but where it appears. And I think the darker chocolate brown colour is kind of better effect in this uh, this lighter. But I think the you know as I'm kind of learning as I go along, it seems to be the way to do it is to get the individual oil spots and then smear them out or streak them out one at a time. And then you can go over and do a final uh, swipe. See if I got a bit more control with this narrower one. See. Yeah, you can almost get individual grain lines of this. The thing is, at what point do you stop? Uh, I know it's like, oh, stop when you're happy, but it's kind of, I just try one or two of these lighter bits, just, I, I quite like this area here. It's, it's kind of looking the effect I'm, I'm after, I think. I'm sorely tempted to just put something else on the white brush and do an overall drag across. But I'm really, I'm just not sure. I might do it on the back, this bit here. I'll, I'll let that dry off for a wee bit 
what I will do is use the block to make a pin wash. I do have uh, Ambu's, I think it's Black Knight pin wash, but let's, uh, let's see if we can make our own. It's hard to tell the consistency to make it because obviously when you buy jars of it, it's uh, all ready to go. But so let's see how we go. I think maybe just a bit too thin. Right, I think I'm going to stop there because I'm starting to go in cycles now, I think. What I'll do is, uh, I'll let this go off for a bit, then I'll just mask up just roughly around here so I can spray the clear yellow and then we'll have a look to see the effect. Okay, so the oils has had uh, time to go off. So now what I'll we'll do is we'll give it a coat of uh, Tamiya clear yellow. So I've already mixed up uh, the paint, but I've made it a lot thinner than usual. So normal paint ratio is 60 paint, sorry, 40 paint, 60 thinners. This time I've probably went to closer to 70 thinners to 30% paint. I find the Tamiya clears to be very sticky paint. It's it's a strange texture, but I just want to put on a light coat and we'll see how it uh, changes the, the effect. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so next step is the uh, chipping fluid and then the top coat. So I was getting ready to apply the chipping fluid uh, to the floor and the, the front metal work here. Uh, but I read the instructions and it says once you apply the chipping fluid and it dries, apply acrylics. Well, I start to think, well, 
the top coats I'm using is lacquers. So I better check to see how it's going to work. So using the test cube here, I put on three light coats of uh, chipping fluid. And then once it was dry, I applied a couple of coats. Uh, I used brown in this case, just so I didn't waste the green. Uh, and that was fine, it went on okay. And then after five minutes, because I had split it into four panels, after five minutes, I started uh, first using a whip, quite a big brush, nothing happened. And I started like forcing it and scrubbing, still nothing happened. Then, got all the big guns and used a toothbrush, and again, with water. Nothing was happening, nothing was happening. So I ended up having to scratch the top coat with a needle. Just a few scratches here and there. And then once that was done, a good hard scrub with a toothbrush was enough to, to activate it and start breaking up the top layer of paint. So that was the effect I got. So that was after five minutes working at it. Oh, sorry. That was after five minutes of the top coat going on, giving it a, a working. So I came back. <coughs> this is again, I thought I'll try it after 20 minutes. Uh, is it today? Yep. I'll try again after 20 minutes just to see because I've got a fair bit of green to paint on the upper surface, which won't be affected. And then again, Scrubbing with this uh, had no effect until until I scratched it with the needle, and then it started to, to to break up. So I'm not sure what I might do is paint the the green on the upper surfaces, clean my airbrush, apply the chipping fluid to the areas I want, and then go back and spray it up with the rest of the top coat and then come in with the, the toothbrush and give it a, a working over. So let me just apply the, the green off camera and then we'll come back when it's time for the chipping fluid. So I put on some of uh, the top coat just in the bits I won't be chipping on just to reduce the time that the paint's going to be left. Uh, after the chipping fluid goes on, so let's put the chipping fluid on now. Don't need a great deal, I'm just gonna... It's more than enough. So the instructions say to do two to three light coats. Uh, it's almost like spraying water, so on my test cube, there's a couple of bits I did go a bit too heavy and it kind of pulled, but it actually dried off uh, flat, so it doesn't seem to have any volume. So. I have to tell if it's so, if it's colorless and it's hard to tell if it's fine. So, I'll we'll just turn that in here only, just to dry it. Okay, I'll do a second coat in the opposite direction. You can see it going on to the, the paint. 
painted red. It's hard to tell what's going on to the, uh, the floor. I guess the more coats, the heavier the chipping. And I guess in the longer you leave the top coat, the harder it is to chip. So, uh, I'll be one more coat because it was very hard. Oops, it's far too heavy. Like I said, I will dry it off, it should dry flat anyway. Okay, so I'll leave that to dry. I'll go off and clean the airbrush and we'll get ready for the top coat, which I'll do off camera and then we'll come back to do the uh, chipping effect. So that's now just over five minutes since I finished the the green top coat and it's been left to dry. So interest, interestingly, where I did the ammo acrylic paint, uh, the old rust, it's kind of got a bit of a sandy finish to it, which I never noticed until the top coat went on. Hopefully that's okay because this bit will be uh, worn anyway, and then we'll uh, we'll put in pigments and whatnot. So we're going to concentrate on the areas where people' feet would be. So this entry bit in front of the bench, this metal work here where people's going to be resting their feet, in the main drive driver's entrance here. So that's the areas we'll concentrate on. So let's see. Let's see if we can get this uh, to work. I'll actually just try using this brush first. I don't think it's going to be strong enough. And like I said, in the test piece, I actually had to break a surface uh, with a needle. So, yeah, this isn't going to have any effect at all, I don't think. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's use a needle when we start just scratching the areas. Just where we want the wear points to be. And then that should be enough to get the paint or the water under the paint and And like I say, oops, that went right through. Uh, this high traffic areas here, a bit, a bit here, feet here. And then the main entrance, probably not in the back here, but Give this a go. I'll try this side first. Okay, it's starting to. This is a bit as really keen to see is like the underneath the the metal coating colour underneath the paint getting worn away.
Yeah, it's tougher this bit, it's tougher than. Just trim this to make it a lot stiffer. It's just a cheap uh, brush. So I just cut it with scissors. There we go, that's better. Oh, that's working much better now. here and knock it off. Now uh, just to swatch the uh, this throttle pedal. Okay, I have to be careful that I'll be able to just glue that end back in. Take all this off from the main area and then just little bits and pieces. So and leave some. Okay. Just uh, this scratch here looks a bit funny by itself, so that's bad. Yeah, that's a corner going. You know what I did forget? I forgot to do this area here. But that's okay, I can come back and... Let's uh, see if I can blow off some of this. Okay, so this is my first attempt at doing uh, chipping. So a couple of points to make here is I've a little bit too hard on the brush here where it's been down into an undercoat. Uh, that's okay, we'll get some dust and grime onto that. Uh, no, oh, it's not too bad. I might reinstate the Plank edges with some uh, pin wash again. But I, I think that's turned out not too bad. What I will do now is another effect I want to try is using uh, polished metal pigments just to highlight these top edges because although we went through the paint with the feet and then into the, the bare metal work, which is now discolored with uh, rust. Yeah, the feet's actually going to polish 
uh, the surface where it's continuously moved. So uh, let's have a go at that now. Okay, so we've got some polished metal, more than pigment again by uh, Ammo. They actually have a good metal one as well, but we'll try the polish and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm not sure the best way to do this, so I don't know if you can see in there. We'll try a cotton bud first anyway, because I, I want it to be quite selective and not over the top. So actually I might try one of these, they're a lot stiffer and smaller. So I don't want to actually drop powder onto it. Loose powder, I want to just have a look. So I might actually just polish the accelerator pedal. Yeah, the driver's feet's going to wear off the corners here. And I'm not sure if these are metal, uh, rubber coated pedals or not. But if they are, then the paint obviously is going to get rubbed off on the top. This top edge here, and this sharp edge is going to get polished, maybe a bit here, and I really want to do this corner here. Okay, so. Okay, so I think that's all I'm going to do now, uh, you know, at the moment. As far as I'm concerned, I'm, I wore the areas, I think. Uh, obviously, we still got washes to do, uh, and dust and dark pigments to, to put in. So, overall, I'm quite happy with that. The chipping fluid worked relatively easy it's just a case now uh, perfecting the technique uh, the metal finish it's not as polished as I was hoping but it's on the right places people's feet rubbing on sharp edges is always going to take off the paint and then eventually wear through to the bare metal and polish it. That's how I've seen in uh, commercial vehicles and whatnot. Things like forklifts and things where the sidestep into the cab is, it wears through the paint to primer, the undercoat and eventually polishes it and it stays polished regardless of the weather and duration as long as it keeps being used. So that's it, a little bit for this part. Uh, 
the next part I'll finish off the the seats and the oh that's it really the seats and the the back and I'll probably do the sides as well which I've started cutting out so these are these fit nicely onto the side here so as you can see the wearing is in line with the door as we expected. 